Alright, let's pick her up. And get in at the negotiation. Alright, let's pick her up. And get in at the negotiation. Hello again. I've made it. I'm finally back in my workshop after um, spending lots of times in playing fields with drones and other things. Um, and uh, some of you may remember that a while ago I mentioned, I don't know if you can see it in the background, this Philips radio, uh, Bakelite radio, um, which I was going to have a look at and been putting off and putting off. I finally got to it and it's the Philips B3G 63A. Now Philips were an odd uh, were an odd group about that time. They never gave their radios names. You know, Echo gave various names to radios and Bush and all the rest of it. Um, but not Philips. They just had a little plate on the back with B3G 63A. But it's a very very good radio. It's a very interesting radio and a very collectible one. And this one um, needed a lot of TLC. Um, as you can see in a minute when I opened it up, it was absolutely grimy. It was dust and filth everywhere. Um, so the first job was to clean it up, take all the valves out, and uh, you can see um, the valve base, how, how corroded and, and horrible that was, and uh, take it out its cabinet. It's a good radio because um, it has long wave, medium wave and FM, um, but the FM tuner is separate, so um, you can have it tuned to a, a medium wave station or a long wave station, and then you can switch it to FM and tune that, and then you can switch on the, on the push switches, piano keys, I think they call them, um, uh, between the two, and you don't have to retune every time, so it's very popular. Also has a very good sound. Now, when I restored and put all the valves back in, cleaned the volume control, cleaned the inside, and powered it up, excuse me, I could have a sip, and powered it up, um, the AM worked, the, uh, uh, the long wave worked, but the FM was completely and utterly dead. So, um, I took, the, uh, took it out of its cabinet, as you can see, took the uh, can off the uh, FM section, and um, did some voltage checks and before I even did the checks I noticed that the uh, one of the resistors there was um, looking very very dark um, and I got the circuit diagram from Trader and uh, on there um, there's a resistor I'll show it to you now on the screen which is uh, R6 um, and R4 and R6 and R4 feed the screen grid on the second valve, the pentode. Um, and when I measured the voltage on the pentode of the valve, it was zero, and on the other side was uh, about 180 volts uh, of the resistor, and the resistor was indeed open circuit. So um, what I did was uh, um, took the old resistor out. I've got it there, I'll show it to you in a moment. and. Um, then I uh, refitted the resistor. Now I couldn't, the, the resistor value on this one, R4, uh, was, was um, oh, sorry, R, R6, uh, was 2.2K. But I didn't have a 2.2K resistor, but I had a, um, a 4.9K, 4 so I put, and also I didn't have the right wattage. So what I've done is put two um, 4.9Ks in parallel, so it gives me the, the, the half watt I needed, they were two quarter watt resistors, and uh, also gives me approximately the right voltage for the screen grid of that pentode. Anyway, I've done that, and I'll show you that in a minute. Um, put them all together, soldered it in place, and lo and behold, FM came through loud and clear. Well, <laughs> not quite, because it suddenly started to um, bother me a little bit is why the uh, original C6 burned out. Why did it go open circuit? Okay, it started to work again um, when I replaced it with, with uh, two other resistors, but um, and then I could smell something. And what I could smell were the other two resistors cooking up. So I turned it off 
and uh, to my horror the voltage um, uh, those resistors were indeed starting to go black same fault as original so what was causing it so I'd like to show you the circuit diagram now and show you um, what I found what the cause of that was so here's a circuit diagram of the Philips B3G63A and this was the culprit this resistor here um, and uh, R6 and that was um, very high what well, was virtually open circuit um, and I'll show it to you in a minute um, and that feeds uh, R4 which feeds the screen grid. Now R4 was fine, no, no problem with that one. Um, so when I replaced that one and was soap testing it, that began to get hot as well. So, but that one not, so the current had to be flowing here. Um, the obvious culprit was C17, this, res this capacitor here. So I isolated that um, and the voltage here was still very low and that resistor was still cooking. The only other path for this was um, through the coil uh, 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 of this this can up um, to, to the anode of V2 and the anode voltage again was only about 70 volts instead of two, uh, 190 so the last culprit was this resistor here um, which was C16. Um, I, disconnected that resistor, lo and behold all the voltages came back to normal and everything was alright. So check the, the, the capacitor and it was very very leaky but it only seemed to happen after a while. Um, anyway I've replaced that, um, I replaced this one as well just for good measure just in case and uh, um, then reapplied power, all voltages were correct here. Uh, that There was no excess heating here but I did replace that resistor again with uh, with two other resistors because um, it was looking a bit cooked and uh, now everything is working absolutely fine um, I'll turn it up just for a snatch but it's gonna be bright, 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 bright. can't do any more because of copyright but there we go um, it's all now working so now a couple of quick shots of the the faulty components so here are the faulty components. Um, the uh, what's one half of the resistor that had burnt up, the other half I've lost already. Um, those this was the capacitor which was was short circuit. Uh, I replaced the other capacitor, and these were the um, two resistors that I originally replaced, and you can see how they started to cook. Um, because of that that faulty capacitor. Anyway, all that is now replaced and uh, let's have a quick look at that. Here we can see the, uh, well you can see one of the capacitors I've replaced and uh, the two um, the two quarter watt resistors in parallel to give me the voltage on the screen grid and that all now works very well. So it's just a question now of putting the can back on the FM section um, and uh, refitting it all in its cabinet and that should be that hopefully well thank you for watching uh, this uh, tech video um, first one in my workshop for a little while and uh, I quite enjoy doing it uh, one of these days when you can't go outside and uh, do anything else really and it's nice and warm and cozy in here and I've quite enjoyed um, working on this radio it's nice when you get a job which uh, you can actually oh, a bit of dust there um, you can actually take through to conclusion and get it working again um, I don't know quite when this was made um, does it say I don't think it does uh, yeah uh, release dates um, September 1956 um, and the price then was 52 pounds six shillings and tuppence so there we go <laughs> 56 to today 2018 well that's quite a quite a jump and it's still working and it's still absolutely fine part of the connection this afternoon on my little connection pile of tunes so um, there we go thank you for watching um, I'm not sure what my next project will be um, I'm going to have a, a break now for a week um, I'm going away for a few days um, and uh, 
then we're not away but I'm just having a break from doing all this stuff for a few days and uh, then um, I'll be back again probably this time um, with uh, an outdoor video again uh, I may go back to my drone or I may just stick with another repair job but at the moment my workshop is empty and uh, I'm going to relax as always look after yourselves and uh, as always, take care. What's coming up is a clue, and you've got one more track to listen to. And what a song! I love this one uh, from Blur. I played another Blur song the other day. This is so fine. Love it. Thank you.